It's a. Uh, it's something that'll change the world and human life as we know it. He knows. He's seen the light. When Monty talks, it's painful. <laughs> Monty, you have been so instrumental in uh, kind of pointing me in the right direction. <laughs> it was about um, looking at your character defects and spirituality. Uh, it, it's the integration of clinical practices with uh, the 12 steps. It's an absolute pleasure. He certainly knows a lot of people. Uh, he's got a lot of energy. And sometimes when you don't have so much energy, he picks you up and carries and you. And the Monty man there certainly this helps. This is one of the places that is about the business of the solution. The views expressed on this special broadcast of the K-12 radio show do not necessarily reflect those of KHLT Recovery Broadcasting or its affiliates. KHLT is not affiliated with any particular 12-step fellowship. Now here's that guy who's getting less popular minute by minute, your host, The Multiman. Well, greetings, recovery family. Those of you who are in recovery, those of you who are advocates of, and perhaps some of you who should be, welcome uh, once again to Take 12 Radio here at Take12Radio.com on your internet dial, broadcasting to you and for you from the outskirts of beautiful downtown Albany, Oregon. How the heck are you? It, it, uh, it is just an awesome privilege to be able to, to broadcast to you guys. Uh, we're in our 11th year of broadcasting now, and... Uh, I, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you because without you, we'd just be talking to ourselves. And I did that for, for enough years as it is. Uh, it is just a privilege. And I, I want to welcome you to email us anytime you like. Our email address is take12radio. That's the number 12, take12radio at comcast.net. You can subscribe to our YouTube page. We're on all different social media websites, uh, uh, LinkedIn, Google+, Twitter, all of them. And uh, visit our main website. If you're listening on YouTube right now, uh, the few of you that do, uh, m- most most of our listeners uh, are clicking on the download MP3 link. But for those of you who are on YouTube, please take some time to visit our website at take12radio.com. You can spell out the number or the word or the number. It'll take you to the same place. So listen, uh, I, I want to tell you right away, uh, before we do anything else, that the Recovery Northwest Project is coming up in September on uh, on September, uh, I believe it's se- September, I'm going to say September 5th. Yeah, September 5th at Clark Community College in Vancouver, Washington. And it's huge. It's a big deal. Uh, the Hands Across the Bridge uh, ceremony from Vancouver to Portland is the largest site of uh, the Mississippi. Uh, celebrating a sobriety and a return to sanity with the uh, alcohol and uh, a drug addicted uh, recovery community. And we want to make sure that if you are in the area that you come by the Take 12 radio booth, we'd love to see you. We're going to be broadcasting from there. Uh, that is the Recovery Northwest Project. You can visit their website at recoverynw.com and they're in the process of updating things. So Type in your contact information, and they'll let you know as soon as everything gets updated there. It's a free event. Don't miss out. All right. On the show today, uh, I I love it when we have recovery recording artists, particularly ones that are members of the faith community, because when you link uh, recovery music up with the power of God, you've got something to behold. You really do. And uh, my guest uh, this week is just that. He, he is a, a recovery recording artist. He's a member of the faith community. He loves God. His name is Rusty Golden. And uh, you, you, may, you may recognize that name. You may not. Uh, his father is William Lee. We're going to talk a little bit about that, too. Uh, but Rusty is going to be sharing with us his experience, strength, and hope, what it was like, what happened, and what it's like today. And and most importantly, four songs uh, from his CD, Sober. And I am really proud and excited to introduce to you uh, my new friend, Rusty. Rusty, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Monty. Hello, everybody out there. I'm Rusty Golden, and I'm talking to you from, I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. And, and and Nashville is just a huge place for for music. Is it easy to get lost there in the in the music uh, uh, community? 
Uh, the music, the, as far as the professionals who really make the music, uh, the musicians and the songwriter community is really not that big. Uh, the business, the music business part is not that big. Uh, it's a pretty close knit community. Once you get down to the, the songwriters who write the songs that everybody knows and, um, the musicians who play on the records that everybody hears on the radio, uh, the uh, the record companies, which aren't, if anything, the record companies are. There's so much. There's so fewer of them now. It's wow. a conglomerated uh, business. You know, everything is. There used to be, uh, I don't know, eight to ten major record labels. I think they're down to three or four now. And the music in Nashville isn't just limited to 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 cowboy music or country western music, like a lot of people think. True? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's been really that's been that way for years. But you know, to to some outsiders, they think you know they think that uh, the stuff that is like its own country radio nowadays is to them it's hillbilly. But I mean. If you're here and you know, I mean, you don't, to me, you don't even hear hillbilly music on the mainstream country anymore. Uh, right. There's more, it's, uh, it's, well, anybody that knows what's going on on country radio as far as mainstream country nowadays knows that the, the beats and oh, there's, there's, there's a lot of even uh, hip hop to it. And I mean, I'm telling you, there's some old school fans who really take offense to the new, but I'll be <laughs> honest with you, my father, uh, William Lee, has, uh, he's a member of a group called the Oak Ridge Boys, and I remember back when they were just starting out, they were a gospel group when my dad joined them. Right. Dad joined them in 1965, and and they got as big as you could get in that sort of gospel uh, around 70, 72 was really there when they were big in the gospel arena. And then in 77, they crossed over into country music. And I remember even back then, <clears throat> uh, some of the hard line, what you call the old school country uh, artists and fans, they took offense to the Oak Ridge Boys back then. I mean, it's hard to believe now because the Oaks were just inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame, you know? Yeah. Um, and they're members of the Grand Ole Opry, so they've, they're they definitely mainstream nowadays. But back then, they were sort of progressive and edgy. They didn't wear cowboy hats, and they weren't... They didn't wear the rhinestone look that was sort of popular back in that day, you know. Right. That more. So anyway, I've seen this before, where what's hot right now on the radio is despised. <laughs> <laughs> what's what you call the purists? Yeah, yeah, and there were even members of the faith community that were a little upset with the Oak Ridge Boys, right, when they crossed over. Absolutely. I mean, the Oaks really, they were having a hard time. I mean, gospel wouldn't touch them. And, they, well, the thing is, they were too gospel for country, and they were too country for gospel. <laughs> for, for, for a couple of years, it was really tough on them. I mean, when when that is your problem, uh, you can't get any bookings, you know. And the yeah. ones you get are just so few and far between that they were really having a tough time. And, and I was really up close and personal with them, you know, traveling with them and helping out, doing whatever. I even sold T-shirts for them. Um, and you wrote some songs. Did, did you not write some music for the Oaks? I absolutely. I had I had songs with them after they became country. Right. Absolutely. Uh, I had uh, two songs on Bobby Sue, the follow-up of the Elvira Fancy Free album. Now your dad, so people know you kind of can can picture your dad in their in their mind. He was the one that was sporting the ZZ Top look, right? He still does. He still does the big long beard. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so that's William Lee. Um, so but before we get into to your story, do, do you have a favorite Oak Ridge Boys story? That's a favorite of yours. Well. A favorite 
favorite story. Um, just that. Listen, here's a, they deserve everything they've got. They uh, we we played. They they were having such tough times during those during those starving years of like seventy five, seventy six. We're really tough on mm-hmm. them. Uh, and we were, there was probably 14 people crammed on one bus. And, but those were the best times. There was really, they were, um, they, they made them, uh, they wouldn't take anything for those hard times that they went through. Mm. Uh, I don't know. I mean, there's time, I, I grew up, I've, I've been around them since I was seven years old. So I've seen yeah. it all. And heard of it, heard it all, and uh, I love every one of them. I'm so proud of them for where they, you know, I mean, just the fact that they were inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame and are members of the Grand Ole Opry is really, you know, that's that's the top of the mountain. Yeah, in, uh, in that in the in the uh, in the business of country music. You bet. You bet. Well, you have been no stranger. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna name drop here. I'm, now, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this uh, on my own for the listeners. Uh, Rusty is a, is a humble guy, and, he, and he's not bragging at all. So I'm gonna brag on him a little bit. Uh, but some of the names that you've been closely associated with, and I won't go into detail about everyone unless you want to mention something. But uh, things like Capitol Records, things like Polygram Music, uh, uh, people like Jeffrey Steele. Uh, Kid Rock, uh, Leonard Skinner, uh, Elton John, uh, the word Grammy that just shines out. Uh, uh, you know, you, you've been nominated for that. Uh, you, you've been given the Song of, of the Year Award. Uh, there, I could go on and on. There's just a whole lot of people that you've rubbed shoulders with and that you've been associated with over the years and some wonderful accomplishments. But things weren't always like that. There was a period of time where something happened to you that kind of threw you into a dark space. Share with us what was going on. Well, I, um, I'm a child of the seventies. You know, when I was, uh, I was 16 and 75, uh, 76 era. So that's, that's when I first started smoking pot. Um, which was, you know, that was the fun. I was young, and that was sort of the thing to do. I was uh-huh. hanging around older, a crew. When things started getting, you know, by the time I was 18 and 19, I had already tried cocaine. And uh, when I first, I remember when I first had my, uh, what, it's funny, I'm, I'm hearing this old drug, uh, the name that's just now coming back on in the, um, in the public consciousness, what had, which had disappeared for so many years, is quaaludes. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but I've been hearing that word here lately, and I won't bring up how I'm hearing it, but everybody knows. Anyway, <laughs> um, but that I used to love those things. I mean, uh, I'm going to go ahead. I hate to, you know, I have a problem that I found out in, when I was in treatment that I, I haven't, I have had, and I try to watch it, but I really had a, I have a problem sometimes romanticizing mm. the, uh, some of my usage. And it's because they're really, at the first part, it was really fun. And, uh, and they're just what the, but it didn't take me long, but that, that the pills, I liked them too much. Uh, yeah. I liked them too much that by 20 years old, I was in the hospital having my stomach pump and uh, from barbiturates. And, um, you know, that's, you know, and that happened. And if anything, it kind of, it straightened me up from the pills. But, man, it really just, even from overdosing, it didn't slow me down from, you know, I didn't quit drugs. I was 20. Things started kind of... I quit pills, though, uh, for a long time. And um, But I started recording uh, major records, you know, and, and stuff with... Um, uh, at 23, I think, is when we had our uh, record deal with... Uh, that was a, Asylum Records, and we were a group that I was with, we were recording an album. It was a pop record. And, you know, the Cokes 
game was around, but I was maintaining with that stuff. I went on and on for years uh, trying to, you know, trying to straddle the fence of not getting too out of it, but still doing drugs, you know. Liquor was never a, really a problem for me. Uh, I never really liked it, so I never did much of it. Mm-hmm. But, man, something about drugs, you know, it, it became, I, I look back on it now, and it was really a love affair for me. I, um, I It's hard to admit that nowadays, but I need to because it's true. It's like uh, I love the way they make me feel. And uh, and I spent a lot of my time making sure that I didn't go uh, that I had them, you know. Yeah. Uh, always wanted to make sure I had, and so it was a to- it was an obsession, and um, and and a love affair that I had. Well, decades went by, two more decades. Uh, but when I was um, when I was forty two years old, I had to go in and and have a, a quadruple bypass. Um, when I come out from that bypass, they put me on three months of oxys. Right. To, to, uh, to, you know, just for the pain. So I went home, uh, actually down to my mother's house to recuperate from a quad bypass with three months worth of something that I really loved. And uh, when the when the three months were worth were gone, I went back to the doctor, and he was asking me uh, how I'm feeling and everything. And and the addict in me told him, "Less." I said, "Well, you know, I've still got pain." So he gave me three more months worth of wow. oxy. So that's six months worth of oxycontin. Um, just you know, and. At that point, it was really, uh, I knew I had a problem. <laughs> yeah. I knew I had a bad problem because I really, uh, until until I went into treatment, you know, I always was on pain pills then. Sure. Uh, it was just on, you know, that's another 10 years more. Now I'm back on pills, and this time it's pain pills. Right, and that was um, it was a dark place in the way that I'll tell you, um, you know, you mentioned the, you know, I was writing, I was I, after I come out of the hospital, uh, with the when I got back home from my mom's, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Jerry, Sally, who's a big songwriter himself, uh, asked when well, he was over at the house, we were talking about writing a song and. Uh, you know, I knew it had some, uh, gospel success, like number ones. And he was asking me, he says, well, have you ever thought about writing a gospel song? I said, well, I never have written one, but I said, I don't think it'd be hard because I really grew up around that. I forgot to tell you earlier that when I was 12, I played with a group called the Rambos. That was Dottie Rambo. and The Rambos. I know that I, name. That was my, <laughs> So I did that when I was really early. So I was was really around it and played it when I was a kid. So that really was um, the music of my youth. Uh, yeah. I, my family has got to this day. We still got a on the golden side. Have got our own Pentecostal Holiness Church that my family attends. The family that's down in Alabama all attend. You know. Yeah. So that the music. That sort of music, though, the uh, that sort of gospel is something that's really in my DNA, which takes me to when, when Jerry asked me would I want to write a gospel song, it was easy for me to want to because it's, it would have came easy to me, and it did come easy, and so did the success of that song. It was called John and the Jordan, and was a huge gospel, number one for a group called Ernie Haas and Signature Sound. And that was the first... Um, the first of four number ones I uh, wrote uh, had three more number ones, and two of those were songs of the year. You know, and right. so I was having I was having success in it. I won songwriter of the year, but Monty, I was uh, I was messed up, man. I was having I was, and I felt guilty about it. I mean, I, my I wasn't so out of it that I 
get in my heart was it weighed heavy with it. You know, I prayed, I went to church, but I was still on pills, you know. It's like I felt the guilt, man, and the guilt just, I, you know, there were times when it just made me take more. Well, it finally got, you know, uh, the dark time is really what the Christmas of 12. Um, I'm out at my brother's house. And my mom and my brothers are there and the kids. And I something about me is when I'm around family, you know, I was I never had anybody tell me that they could tell I was on anything. I guess that's another reason that it was easy for me to skirt by all those years. Sure. If nobody ever said, Are you on you know, are you on something or anything like that? And I <laughs> even when I told when I told um, some of my really closest friends, I said, you know, I've got a problem. I, they, they, when I told them I was going to rehab, they said, for what? They were totally shocked. And, and half of me is like proud that I never got out of it that they could tell. But then the other half is like, it's not good that they couldn't tell. That, was, <laughs> that tells you how bad I was. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I was taking, I promise you, I was taking enough to put many people down. Right. But anyway, but anyway, back to the Christmas thing, my, uh, my family, they could tell because they really know me and something about me. I've got, I used to have a problem about like taking extra when I go around family functions for whatever reason. (laughs) And, uh, I get around the family and, you know, I just didn't want any, anyway, (laughs) right. Family things. But, um, but they could tell, and my brother asked me, he says, You're, I'm going to have to ask you to leave, man. And uh, he says, the kids are asking what's wrong with you. Mm. And my mom was, she said I was nodding out, and they, was tell, they thought that I, you know, my mom says, you know, they don't know what somebody with a stroke looks like, and to me it looks like that's what you got, the way you're talking and acting. Right. You bet. And so that was a that was a big thing for me because I'm really close to the family. I don't want any. I never want anybody to be upset with me. I'm a people pleaser to a fault, and I love my family unconditionally. And for them to be upset with me was a real. That was like a bottom. I mean, I didn't have to end up in jail. Yeah, that was that was plenty of a bottom for me to to be asked to leave. Christmas family time, you know. Yeah, that was pretty. That was a bad hit for me. That's pretty and rough. Anyway, that I, I I had rel I had a couple of relatives of mine had gone through a treatment center out in Oklahoma. A friend of my father's and mine from uh, back in the eighties had gone through this. Uh, treatment center out there and it's a christian faith-based treatment center and uh that he that that a couple of other relatives of mine ended up going through that same place and um i just knew you know when it came time and it came time to be offered for me to go out there i took it and that was on uh February 23rd is when I got there. So my sobriety date to this day is the 24th of, uh, of 13. And that's how I got to rehab. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. It took me a long time, but I definitely, <laughs> uh, I'm so glad I went. You know? I am. I am too, brother. All right. We got to take a break. And when we come back, uh, we're going to, we're going to talk about this CD sober And we're going to start listening to some of Rusty's music. So, folks, don't go away. More with my very special guest, Rusty Golden, when we return. Free by the Sea is a drug and alcohol recovery center located in beautiful Ocean Park, Washington. This facility is amazingly gorgeous. But what's even more impressive is the integrity of the staff and the treatment provided for those wishing to recover from drug and alcohol addiction. The folks at Free by the Sea have a passion for presenting the solution to addiction for you and your loved one. To speak with an admission specialist, call toll-free 800-272-9199. That's 800-272-9199. 
running Wish. around in the meetings, gobbling up gallons of bad coffee, flapping his gums wherever he can bring a smile to a hurting face. It's Slogan Man! We know cute little platitudes and sayings on the wall in a 12-step meeting won't keep you sober, but they sure will make you think, consider, and even laugh your way through an otherwise crappy day. Can't wait to get to your home group to hear those slogans over and over and over and over again? No need to. Pick up a copy of the 12-step Gazette and join the adventures of Slogan Man. Visit www.12stepgazette.com and subscribe today. Slogans and platitudes are no substitute for working the steps, but Slogan Man is very cool. This is Jerry Vandiver, and you're listening to Take12Radio.com, recovery talk and positive music. Well, welcome back, uh, friends. Uh, my guest is Rusty Golden. Listen, after his health problems in 2002, Rusty had become dependent on prescription pain medication. It led him to seek help in a treatment center called Rob's Ranch in Oklahoma. It was while there that he began performing songs for other clients and their families. It was obvious to everyone that there was something powerful in the material and the soulful way that Rusty was performing. He then began to plant the seeds for the album project that he began working on in September 2014, along with producer and engineer Scott Baggett, a studio full of some of the most celebrated musicians in the world uh, and songs from Nashville Elite. Uh, The result, the recovery-themed album called Sober, was released on 5-15-15, and we're going to be playing four songs from that CD. Uh, uh, Rusty, this first song called Out of My Hands, tell us about this. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you uh, you actually had a pretty good rant there about exactly what happened. But, um, it almost sounded like you were reading it from a bio. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. <laughs> uh, I'm, just, uh, I'm just playing with you. I know, and, uh, I know. Like, uh, you know, like you were saying, there was a, there was a piano out at that ranch, and uh, there's a chapel there. And every morning I got to, during the chapel, I got to sing my, you know, there, I got to do a couple of my gospel songs for, uh, and I did that every day, you know, for 90 days. Mm-hmm. Um, but along the way, I was asked, uh, you know, the counselors would ask me to play a song, you know, maybe, maybe like during group or there was uh, the family weekends. They uh, they would have like prayer for the families and before the before the family weekends would start. And they would ask me to play a couple of songs and. And so I did, you know, I would play maybe one of the gospel songs, but I, I, w- I had been working on Jeffrey Steele. You had mentioned him earlier. I, bet I had been working with Jeff for about 10 years, and Jeff's one of the absolute top songwriters and artists in, in Nashville. And, um, and Jeff had sent me, while I was in treatment, sent me a demo of his of a song called Sober. So I was... I was um, I had learned it, you know. Well, while I was in, you know, I thought, man, you know, I know so many of the biggest writers in Nashville, and even though I am a writer, I was, uh, I was just wanting to hear what some of my other friends might have. Well, I put out the word to them, and one of the uh, one of the writers would be Bob DePiro, and Bob, uh, with a friend of mine named Bart Allman. Bob has wrote, you know, he wrote one of the big songs that the Oaks had called American Made. My baby is American Made. Right, right. And he's written other big songs like Out of the Blue Clear Sky, George Strait, and it just had a ton of daddy's money and all these huge hits. But And I've known Bob a long time, but I asked, um, I sent an email to a bunch of my friend, uh, songwriter friends, and Bob being one of them, to send me if they had any recovery themed type songs, um, and the thing is, that's such the opposite of what anybody in country is wanting to hear. It's <laughs> the opposite. They want drinking songs, weekend uh, drinking, and more drinking with tailgate and uh, hot pants. You know, it's, right, uh, right. 
it's it's gotten down to a common denominator of just drinking songs. Nothing. Everything sounds like Spring Break, you know. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> there are some great writers did have some songs that weren't getting recorded, and that's where I um, mind found some of these great songs that I think were just great uh, that fit perfect on this album project. Because after seeing what was going on with the the families after they would hear these songs. I was watching it move on them, and I'd see mm. tears. I'm, I'm going, my, the Lord was showing me, like, look, Rusty, this is what's happening. You need, you know, there's a place for all kinds of music, and this is what's touching people right here. And the Lord worked on my heart about that. And uh, and I did a lot of praying about it, you know, to... to to get a to get the songs and to get a project off the ground that was uh, like this, you know, and I, it's it's something that my heart is all into, and I think there's a place for it. Uh, Out of my hands is one of the songs that I got, and it's from Bob DePiro and Bart Allman. And this song is going to move you, my friends, especially if you have somebody in your life that is struggling uh, with active alcoholism or addiction. I promise you, hold on to your seat. Here is... Hey, that's the one thing about this song. is I think it's the only one that might come from the, uh, from the angle of the, the parent. The parent, right, right. That, that I'm talking about the loved one. Uh, so that's the cool thing. I watched this one really work on parents' yeah. hearts, yeah. you know. So that's the one thing I loved about it. It was uh, kind of second person, if you will. Here's Rusty Golden singing Out of My Hands. Second time in rehab It's more than just a deep sad I tried but I could not keep him clean One hand hanging on the end of my rope Family in pieces and my spirit broke Just like grains of sand Pulled out of my hands And into his I told my wife the only way We can help our boy Ooh, Is one day at a time and I can only pray that he own serenity If I could have give him all of mine Twenty-eight days is a pretty good start Hope is alive again in my heart I reach out to my maker I whisper I surrender Give me please
Out of My Hands, sung by my guest Rusty Golden. That is a powerful song, man. Uh, I just, uh, he gads. Wow. Uh, you know, it really, really, it really helps us to realize how powerless we are without God's help, true? Absolutely. Yeah. I yeah. Would, yeah, absolutely. It's, I have a friend who says, one of my co-hosts on our Wednesday show, that says, if I'm powerless and you're powerless, zero plus zero is zero. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's that's right. Well, this next song, "Sober," this is also the title of the CD. Tell us about this, Rusty. Okay, it's what it's really the you know. There's two songs that were the really like the cornerstone first recovery. The only two recovery songs that I had to to play uh, for for a month or so while I was out in treatment. Where the first one was Wine in the Water. My buddy T. Graham Brown wrote that one, and I'm right. sure you've heard it. You bet. It's like, it's, it's one of the best faith based recovery songs I think not only has been written, but will ever be written. It's really a perfect song. Um, the way that it's, the way that the twist on the title yeah. works in the chorus as a songwriter, it's the old school way of a net. What's the, they used to call the Nashville twist. Mm-hmm. Twist in that title, oh, it's just so perfect, and I miss that way of writing, and I love that song. It's just a great, great standard to me. Yeah. And then when I reached out to my buddy Jeffrey Steele, uh, Jeffrey, I want to mention, not a, he's written like so many big songs. One of his biggest is a group called Rascal Flats had one called What Hurts the Most mm. that Jeff wrote, which is really big. But he's also had like five other number ones by that group. Uh, all their biggest ones were Jeff's songs, and he's just a huge writer. Um, Jeff sent me his demo of Sober out to while I was in treatment just for me to listen to. Little did he know, I'm taking it and learning it to play it <laughs> for group and stuff. And, you know, some of the counselors that were there, uh, I feel like I need to say their names real quick because they did so much for me. Bruce Kopp and Bill Anderson and Mark Vickers and Dennis Madden. They're, they're, these guys put their heart and soul into this place out in a little country town called Purcell, Oklahoma. Mm. And I thank God every day for those guys, really. Amen. But uh, Jeff, Jeff sent me this song, and I learned it. And um, it's a lot of people's favorite song off the disc. I tried to do a bunch of great songs. For every, <laughs> I want every one of them to be strong, but this one seems to like stick out a lot for people. And I'm so glad it's hitting and resonating with folks. And it's Jeffrey Steele uh, written and Rusty Golden performed. Here we go, sober. All right. Oh, 
always out there working the angles when I should have been here looking for angels and I'd give anyone who listen more than an earful about my cruel world took quite a big stumble Get back to my humble place Had to watch it all crumble A year ago today But I got sober And I got over myself I traded lying and crying Just got sick of all the lows and all the why me's. I keep the past around, but only to remind me to look over my shoulder every chance I get. And when I bump into the old me, I help him find his words and apologies from the very first worst going around. Rusty Golden, Sober. I'm here in steps 1 through 12 through that entire song. Folks, don't go away. More with my guests. we got two more songs to listen to. We'll be right back right after this. As men and women who have recovered from utterly hopeless states of addiction ourselves, we know all too well what it's like to battle addiction daily. We are Origins Recovery Centers. Here at Origins, we have taken that which we have learned along the way, excised anything unhelpful and unnecessary, infused it with the latest medical research and innovative therapeutic methods, and created what we know to be the absolute gold standard in substance abuse treatment. And Origins provides the most preeminent aftercare and relapse prevention program available in the United States. For a free confidential clinical assessment, call toll-free 888-843-8935. That's 888-843-8935. Origins, 
delivering real solutions for real families. Men, women, and their families experience tremendous pain and suffering due to the struggles they face from substance abuse and its co-occurring mental health challenges. They need to find a safe place for peace and healing. Therapia Addiction Healing Center was born out of a deep desire to provide that safe and powerful healing environment. Therapia exists to help people recover from addictions by developing and maintaining healthy, meaningful relationships with God, self, and others. To speak with an addiction specialist, call 1-855-652-4325. That's 1-855-652-4325. Or visit our website at www.therapia.net. Therapia Addiction Healing Center. Restoring lives one step at a time. Hey guys, this is Richie Supa, and you are listening to Take12Radio.com. Recovery talk and positive music. All right, welcome back, my friends. Are you tuned into Take12Radio.com on your internet dial? My guest this week, Rusty Golden. Uh, you may recognize his name. William Lee uh, is his father. Uh, the extremely talented, really long bearded gentleman of the Oak Ridge Boys, but Rusty is a uh, an artist in his own right, and uh, not always do do our kids uh, follow in our footsteps. I will tell you though, uh, Rusty, that my son uh, my son Colin is a musician extraordinary. You put any any instrument in front of him, he can play it, and he's seventeen years of age. Uh, and uh, my other son Cameron who is now married and lives about an hour from us, uh, he's going to love this interview because he is a country freak. Uh, <laughs> he just he can't play it. He can't sing it. But, man, he can listen to it all day long. He's just going to really appreciate your music. And, of course, uh, my talented son, Colin, just appreciates music like crazy. So uh, I really want to thank you for carrying on the music tradition, uh, you know, of your dad and and, 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 and the love of the Lord and taking uh, what could have been your, 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 your biggest, you know, problem and, and turning it into your greatest asset. I mean, what a... What what a wonderful gift to be able to give away this whole recovery thing and and through this music. So I just want to tell you how much I appreciate that, my brother. That means so much to me. Uh, I really appreciate it. That's really what I want to do with it. I uh, I have got to make the I've got to turn it all around. Yeah. And make it uh, just the best thing that ever happened to me to go through all the the mess that I did uh, because I want to help people the way I've been helped. Sure, sure, and, and and you're doing that. Listen, folks, uh, Rusty's website is rustygolden.net, and you can follow the links here on Friday's page. Uh, you know, if you if you want to get now, can they get your CD at your website? How can they do that? They can get it on the website. And if they would like it, you know, uh, going through the website, they can get an autographed copy. It lets you know how to get uh an autograph one, mm-hmm. if they would, if they would like a hard copy, and of course, if they want to download it, it's on all the the main download iTunes, Amazon, Google Play. It's on all the main players in that in that genre, you know. Right, right, great, awesome. Well, folks, do not miss out on his website. Now, you've got some recovery stuff on that website too, right? As far as yeah, you had emailed me about some uh, a re- uh, recovery page. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not. Uh, yeah, that is not on the website. It's a, it's actually a Facebook page called Rusty in just the letter N Recovery. Is a Facebook page uh, with um, there's almost two thousand people, and it's not that old. Uh, it's just my. You know, it's like a lot of the. A lot of the recovery pages, it's full of, you know, daily affirmations and quotes and pictures and articles, and it's it's my uh, recovery page. Okay. It's whatever, it's whatever I'm kind of digging on that day, and I really try my best. Uh, I'm pretty good about doing something every day, and sometimes more than once a day, uh, I probably do. Well, not probably. I definitely maintain more of that recovery page here of late than I than I do my other 
to your other uh, Facebook page. You okay. Have. Well, listen, we're going to put a link uh, to your to your Facebook page, Rusty in Recovery, as well. So, folks, if you don't remember that, just go to the link here at Take Twelve Radio. All right, Rusty, ain't no friend of mine. Tell us about it. Okay, this is a friend of mine named uh, Chris Wallen, uh, another big time songwriter here in town, um, and. Uh, Man, let's let's just let the song do the story, because uh, I don't want to give away what, okay. what happens. All right, here we go. Here is okay. Rusty Golden from his CD, Sober, Ain't No Friend of Mine. Had a girl who really loved me. You convinced me that she didn't. That night. Ain't no friend of mine, Rusty Golden. Uh, hey, Rusty, is that you on the piano? Absolutely, yeah. Man, dude, that's awesome, brother. <laughs> good, good, good job. I've always been uh, very envious of people that can play the piano. I dinked around with the guitar for for a while, and uh, but man, uh, yeah, that's beautiful. You know, that I was telling you that I played uh, with the Rambos when I was twelve. Well, back then I was a drummer. And when I was 13, I went to see Elton John, and uh, it was in 1972. It was right around the time Rocket Man came out. And that seeing this guy, this rock in person, because I wasn't, you know, my dad's 
my dad's age remembered the Jerry Lee Lewis. And right? there wasn't anybody who came out in the like rock arena in between Jerry Lee Lewis and Elton John. You know, you can't, I don't count Liberace. Right. And, but, you know, but there just wasn't anybody doing pop rock music uh, in you know, that I would like, and I really can't think of anybody right. uh, in between the two. So when I saw Elton John, I'd never seen anybody in that sort of, doing that sort of music that played piano. And it wasn't that I could play, but watching this guy, and he was just an awesome entertainer back then. Yeah. He's great nowadays, but I mean, back then he was a wild man. And to get to see this guy jumping up and down and, and kicking his legs out and hopping up on top of the grand and <laughs> just going crazy. I knew then I saw this guy do that, Elton, and, and I, the next day I put my sticks down and I started teaching myself how to play piano and teaching myself. I loved Elton John's songs, so I, I started learning his songs from his records, just taught myself how to play. My brother picked the sticks up. And he is a phenomenal. Chris, my brother, played the drums on this album. Wow. And uh, and anyway, uh, but that's when you said the thing about the piano. Yeah. That's when I started. I didn't always play piano, and that's kind of, that was uh, what made me start that's, playing that's what did it. in Elton. Well, well, this last song that we have is called Hollow Man. And this is a great way to to close this out because we are we are almost out of time. Uh, tell us about Hollow Man, uh, Rusty. And well, what- it's, it's really cool. Um, I could reach out to you know I could get all these songs that you did. I only wrote one song on this album because I was just so knocked out. I went through about three hundred songs to pick the twelve other. I wrote one. There's thirteen songs on the album, so I wrote one. The other twelve. I was just so knocked out with them uh, up out of the 300 I listened to. But anyway, I, I, uh, two of my friends, uh, Larry Shell and Tim Williams, I sent both of these guys separate emails telling them uh, that I, what I was looking for as far as recovery themed uh, songs. And neither one of them know that, knew that the other guy had sent the same song they had written together. Wow. Uh, <laughs> and it was just the one that Kim wrote up, Ain't Going Down to the Sun that comes up, the Garth Brooks, and written a bunch of songs. Uh, he's just one of the big ones. All these songs that on the album are really stellar uh, written songs because the guys that write them are just some of the best we have in Yes, they are. And just, I'm so blessed to have them as friends of mine that I could reach out to and get. Anyway, it's kind of cool the way they both sent me that song and didn't know that the other one sent it and all that kind of stuff. And, and it is, it's a, uh, to me, it's a gospel song. Um, uh, and, that's not. Uh, I, I really, am, I want to tell everybody out there, though, um, that how much I really appreciate you, Mike, for letting me do this interview with you. Absolutely. And I, hope, I hope everybody out there finds happiness and peace. Um, and if they're struggling, to look to the Lord for help. Mm. And if they need to get help by somebody else, man, that's all good, too. Uh, help is help. And uh, we, the Lord's in the miracle work in business, too, you know. Yeah. And always has been and always will be. I pray every night and every morning and uh, and during the day, just like my grandfather did. I'm all time going, help me, Lord, help me, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's a thing with me, you know. And uh, But uh, I just really appreciate you, Monty. Let me do this. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's wonderful. I'm, I'm, finding, I'm finding out the hard way that finding people like you that do what you're doing to even play and talk to me and play these songs, uh, there aren't very many of them, especially somebody that can give me this much time um, and play that. And it's just hard, and you yeah. know that. Yep. And I really appreciate that, that, that you're out there for whoever might be listening that might need you right then, just like I do. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Rusty, so very, very much. Here is Rusty singing Hollow Man. I had 
Rusty Golden from his CD Sober. That song is entitled Hollow Man. You can visit his website at rustygolden.net. Rusty, I was thinking about what you were saying um, about how difficult it is to to really penetrate our our world uh, today with with God and recovery, especially both of them mixed in we live in a world today that's all about uh you know serving self and being man-centered and you know you just you don't have to watch five minutes of the news to see where we're going and uh and it is it's hard to get into uh to uh into the doors uh that we need to get through to to get to people i mean i struggle too i've been doing this 11 years and uh we're nowhere near where we need to be as far as people being aware of take 12 radio and uh, so having people like yourself with the caliber of, of music and a talent and and your passion, uh, primarily your passion for God and, and for people that are hurting, um, helps to to break down those doors. A lot of people, they love what we do, but they don't know that we're doing it. And, you know, <laughs> it, right. you know, and it's like trying to get past the secretary, secretary, secretary assistant administrator to finally get to the guy that can call the shots. It's, it's crazy hard. Um, and, uh, and yet I know who's really in charge and brother, what you're doing is touching many, 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 many people. 
And I remember Walter Cronkite said years ago uh, that he was he was in broadcasting for almost 20 years before he ever got a personal letter. Wow. <laughs> so so, you know, we just got to keep trusting, don't we, brother? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's a while. That's I'll never forget what you just said about the Walter Cronkite. Whenever <laughs> I ever hear his name again, I'll remember what you yeah. just told me. <laughs> yeah, in the biz, almost 20 years uh, from the time he started, whatever that was, as an intern or whatever, all the way to, you know, to the end of his career. Uh, 20 years yeah. before I got a personal letter. That just blows my mind. You know, it makes me just think, well, maybe there's some hope there. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So any last words for the listener, Rusty, before we go? I'm sorry. I didn't hear what you just said. Any last words for the listeners before we, we sign off today? I just, I, I wanted to let you know how much I appreciate them listening to you. Uh, mm. It's a wonderful thing. I want to know that people are out there listening to you because you need to be heard, my friend. Oh, bless and, your heart. Uh, thanks to you. Really, thank you so much. I'm so, you know, when I was, when I'm, I finished this project and then like really that's when my work started because now how do I get it out there? Yeah. Well, I'm starting to do every, I'm looking online, I'm sending, you know, sending them the rehabs, I'm sending them, you know, it's hard to find many, I was, we had already talked before off the air about uh, finding uh, radio stations that say, recovery music, and then I get, by the time I get it to them, I find out, well, they've been shut down for a year. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, so, anyway, to actually have somebody call me back, like <laughs> you did, and set something up where I'm actually doing something, there's another one that's a man out there named Garrett Hart with Rock and Recovery out of Akron, Ohio, that's been also on my team as far as playing my stuff and adding it to their... Uh, but I'm here. You know, but you've got a thing where we do interviews and stuff, and uh, theirs is mainly just music. Right. And but I thank God for them too. You know, just something to to help me help somebody if I can with my songs. And so that's what I'm here to do. That's what the Lord put me on earth to do is to try to help people. And He gave me the gift to do it. And thank you so much for letting me do that with your station. A- a- absolutely, it is absolutely my privilege. And uh, Listen, uh, give your dad a hug for me. I've been, you know, I've been an Oak Ridge Boys lover for since day one. Uh, and uh, I'll be with him all weekend. We're going to go to a family. Uh, we're going to a family reunion together, and I will. I will be uh, that would be away from uh, no social media. We're going to be way out in the middle of nowhere with no Wi-Fi. Uh, hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Rusty, thank you so much, uh, folks. Don't forget his website, RustyGolden.net. You can follow the links on here on Friday's page. Uh, this will be posted on all our social media sites. And uh, you can download uh, this to your PC or your smart device. Just right-click on the download MP3 link, and you can have a copy of this for yourself. Uh, please uh, pick up Rusty's CD. It'll help. From, really, it'll help promote uh, people getting returned to sanity. That's what this kind of music does. And uh, listen, if you're in the recovery community and uh, this is the first time you've ever heard any kind of recovery commu- music, well, you've heard some of the best right here at Take 12 Radio with my guest, Rusty Golden, and his CD, Sober. RustyGolden.net. All right, my friends, until our next broadcast, this is the Monty Man along with my guest, Rusty Golden, And we're wishing God's perfect serenity for you. Bye-bye, everybody. This has been a broadcast of KHLT Recovery Broadcasting. Kitty, 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 kitty.